Pairing an external SSD with a Mac Mini is a cost-effective way to expand your storage, manage backups, and avoid Apple's pricey storage upgrade. Finding the perfect SSD for your M4 Mac Mini should be a straightforward process, but there are some crucial things to keep in mind and make sure that you're getting the best kind of drive for your needs. That's because sometimes some manufacturers advertise impressive read and write speeds. But when it comes down to working with Macs, they can be a bit misleading and may perform poorly. In this video, we're going to explore some of the most popular SSDs for M4 Mac Mini and compare them. The end goal here is to try and find the best SSD for your Mac Mini. All right, let's just jump right in. First off, I've got the one terabyte SanDisk Extreme external SSD. At the time of recording, this costs $90, but then over time, this could be different prices throughout the year. It's a USB 3.2 Gen 2 SSD that boasts write speeds of 1000 megabytes per second and then read speeds of 1050 megabytes per second. It's got an IP65 rating, which means it's water and dust resistant. According to the fine print, it can withstand water for three minutes and 30 seconds. I tested it for a minute and then everything seemed to work just fine. So I think that's good enough. It also claims to have a drop protection for up to three meters, which means nine feet and 10 inches. I just dropped it on my carpet and then it works fine right after that. And finally, when it comes to encryption, you can set a password and secure your files with this drive. Overall, it's got some pretty rugged features. And if you're out and about, this is probably the best option as it can easily fit in your pocket or a small bag. And then if you drop it outdoors, you don't have to worry. Next up, we have the Crucial X10 Pro. This is a one terabyte portable SSD. It's currently priced around 110 to 115. I got this on Black Friday sale for $90, but then th throughout the year, the prices could change. It's an SSD claiming to have super fast read write speeds of excess of 2100 megabytes read and then 2000 megabytes write respectively. It's a USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2 drive. It's also water and dust resistant up to IP55. But here's the thing. The fine print does not say how long this can stay underwater, so I did not test for that. And it clearly says the X10 Pro should not be submerged in water in the fine print. I guess it's not that water resistant. Also, it doesn't have that high of a drop test rating. Let's see if this drive can make up for the lack of durability by being faster than the previous SSD. Also, this drive is quite small and portable, so it should be able to fit in a small bag or pocket very easily. Now, the third option is in your typical SSD. This is an SSD enclosure paired with the NVMe SSD. To get this SSD, you need to buy the enclosure separately and then buy the NVMe SSD separately. In my case, this enclosure by itself cost $119. Then I paired it with an Western Digital SN770 one terabyte NVMe SSD, which is currently around $69. So altogether, this would cost me around $190. But keep in mind, you have to assemble this SSD by removing the screws connecting the SSD and putting it back together. It's a quite simple and straightforward process, but if you don't wanna do that, you can actually opt in for a pre-assembled version, which runs around $219 for one terabyte. While the setup does not handle water, dust, or drop protection like the other SSDs, it still delivers an incredible 3000 megabytes per second read and write speeds, making it the top choice for performance-minded users. Also, it's quite bulky to fit in a pocket or a small bag, so this will be pretty much staying on my desk. Now, enough about specs and features, let's put everything to the test. For all these tests, I'm using my base M4 Mac Mini, which is a 256 gigabyte version. Then I also use the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test to conduct all the tests. There are other tools out there, but I like this one, so I'm just gonna stick with that. Now, to get the baseline, I first ran the test on the Mac Mini's internal drive. I got 1920 megabytes per second write speed and then 2841 megabytes of read speed. Now the question is, how do these external drives perform? All right, the first up we have is the SanDisk Extreme SSD. When I actually put this to the test, I got the write speeds of 943 megabytes per second write and then 719 megabytes of read. This is a lot lower than the advertised speeds of 1000 write and then 1050 read. Next up was the Crucial X10 Pro, which advertises speeds of 2100 megabytes for both read and write speeds. But when I got testing on it, on my Mac mini, I only got 948 megabytes of write speed and 935 megabytes of read speed. To me, that didn't seem right. So I ran the same test on a Windows PC and sure enough, I got the fully advertised speed. So it turns out that this is because Mac OS or Apple does not support 
USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2 protocol. Macs primarily use the Thunderbolt 4, which may look identical to USB-C on the outside, but then they operate with a completely different protocol. Now, I knew this going in, but for the average consumer, this may be frustrating surprise. It's quite easy to miss the fine print and wonder why are you not getting the performance that you paid for? Finally, I put the OWC SSD paired with the Western Digital 1TB SSD to the test. This Western Digital NVMe SSD boasts impressive read-write speeds, which I'll put up here, but these are limited from the OWC enclosure, which claims to deliver a whopping 3,151 megabytes of read speeds, but surprisingly, I could not find any mention of write speeds anywhere on the packaging. But overall, they're in excess of 3,000 megabytes per second, which I fully tested. When I ran the Blackmagic benchmark tool, I got write speeds of 3,103, and then read speeds of 3,072 megabytes per second. This was three times faster than the other two SSDs. Now, tests are great, but then the question is, how do these drive handle with actual use cases? To find out, I transferred five gigabytes of CSV files to all three SSDs, then measured their read and write speeds. Along the way for bigger file transfers, I also measured the temperatures and see how these drives perform overall throughout time. So let's dive into the result. For each drive, I conducted two tests. The first test measured the file transfer speed by calculating the difference between the start and end times in my editing software. For the second test, I wrote a simple Python script which automates the file transfer. The script copies folders from my Mac mini to the external SSD and then back from the external SSD to my Mac mini. Then it captures the time it took to execute that transfer and then hence we have our result. So the first up we have Samsung 1TB SSD. The write speeds are as follows. The exact folder size was 5.08 gigabytes or 5212 megabytes which transferred in 7.6 seconds. So if you divide the 5212 by 7.6 seconds, you get 685 megabytes per second. The read speeds completed in 5.4 seconds, clocking it at a solid 965 megabytes per second. Not bad, but let's see how it stacks up against the competition. Next up, we had the Crucial X10 Pro external SSD, which performed well during the five gigabyte transfer test. It completed the write test in 6.6 .6 seconds, translating to a write speed of 775 25 megabytes per second. The read speeds were slightly faster finishing in about 5.5 seconds, which translates to about 930 megabytes per second. While not the fastest in the lineup, it delivered reliable performance. Now the OWC enclosure paired with the Western Digital SN770 delivered truly blazing fast speeds during my test. For a five gigabyte file transfer, the write speed hit an impressive 3011 megabytes per second, completing the task in just 1.7 seconds, while the read speeds clocked even faster at 32 megabytes per second, finishing it in just 1.6 seconds. This was incredibly quick for small file transfers. Now here's something interesting. I retested everything by moving files and folders. These were mainly my files or my video files from my last video which mainly consisted of 4k recordings some photos some audio files and basically all the content that i needed to create my last video so i started transferring this data to the sandisk ssd it completed the write test in about 194 seconds which translates to 595 megabytes per second the read test took 218 seconds giving us of 531 megabytes per second read speed. As you can start seeing, the performance started to drop when we do a larger file transfer. During the test, I started measuring how hot these drives got, and then this particular drive went over 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Next up was the Crucial X10 Pro. It handled the write test slightly better, finishing in about 186 seconds at the speed of 622 megabytes per second. The read test took 212 seconds, coming in at 548 megabytes per second. A small improvement over the SanDisk, but same ballpark. Finally, we have the OWC enclosure paired with the Western Digital SN770, and this is where things started to fall apart. The write speeds dropped significantly compared to the stellar 5GB test results. It completed the 115GB file transfer in just 150 seconds, which puts it at right around 771 megabytes per second. It did not live up to the blazing speeds we saw earlier. The read speeds suffered even more, taking the task 222 seconds to finish, 
putting the speeds at 512 megabytes per second read speeds. Now I conducted these tests multiple times, testing at 10 gigabytes, 20 gigabytes, and 50 gigabytes. Overall, it was clear the more data you move, the worse the speeds got. And I think the main culprit here was the Mac mini, not these drives. And here's how I can prove it. So I copied the files out of the OWC drive onto the Mac mini, and then immediately right after I ran the Blackmagic SSD benchmarking tool on the Mac mini's internal drive. I got write speeds of 311 megabytes per second and read speeds of 1250 on the internal drive. These speeds were way too low than what we got earlier, which was 1921 megabytes per second write speeds and 2841 megabytes of read speed. Clearly an issue with the internal Mac mini SSD. It was either overheating or there was some sort of SSD caching issue with the NAND or something. I also immediately ran the test on the OWC external drive, but to my surprise, it delivered full advertised speeds. Now, after waiting for two to three minutes, I reran the internal SSD speed test and then it performed just fine. So I'm thinking either the cache was full or the temperatures were too high to where it started thermal throttling the internal drive. Let me know in the comments below what do you think would cause this to happen. One thing I learned from doing all these tests is that in order to get the full advertised speeds, you need to have a faster drive and not only that, you need to have a faster internal SSD on your main laptop or Mac. However, if I'm using the external SSD and not really transferring anything internally to my Mac and running everything off of external SSD, then I should be simply fine. The issue only happens when I start transferring between my internal and external SSDs. Now I put a bunch of apps on the three external drives to see how they worked when I opened and ran them straight from the SSD. I tried using Adobe Lightroom, Asplat Legends. Now I couldn't fully install DaVinci Resolve on the external drives, but then I put all the projects and everything on the external drive. And then even when I rendered stuff, I rendered it on the external drive just to see how they handled heavy workloads. When I tested the Crucial X10 Pro and the SanDisk SSDs with the DaVinci Resolve, I noticed some lag and delays when scrolling through my timeline and moving around. But when I used the OWC SSD, it was a total champ. It handled the same tasks without any noticeable lag. It felt like just the same as using internal Max SSD. Now when using Adobe Lightroom, all drives performed seamlessly. I manually timed launch times using my editing software. And then I also used Python scripts to measure how long it takes to open up these apps. And surprisingly, they were like very close to each other. Lightroom opened in 2.3 seconds on the OWC external SSD, 2.4 seconds on the X10 Pro, and then two seconds on the OWC. Does 0.4 of a second even matter at this point. Asplat Legends launched in under one second on all three drives. Honestly, these tests felt a bit meaningless because all three drives handled app launches flawlessly. They worked fine. Everything just seemed to work fine. The only caveat there was on the OWC, the DaVinci Resolve worked just as it did on the internal drive. Now let's talk about the use cases. Now there are many external SSDs out there and I just tested a few of them. Each drive has its own strength and weaknesses, but it's important to choose the right one that best fits your needs. The SanDisk Extreme X SSD is a rugged and durable drive that's great for people who use their computers on the go. It's not the fastest, but it's reliable and it can handle most tasks. It's easy to put it in a bag or a pocket and take it anywhere you want to take it without worrying about water resistance or dropping it, unless you drop it from a cliff or something. The Crucial X10 Pro is a fast drive but it can't reach its potential on a Mac due to the lack of support. That's because Macs do not support USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2 right now. It's still a good choice for general tasks, but it might not be the best option if you need to transfer large files very quickly. In terms of portability, it offers less compared to the SanDisk SSD. Overall, it remains the coolest when compared to the other two drives that I tested. The OWC Thunderbolt enclosure paired with the Western Digital SN770 NVMe SSD delivered excellent performance for small file transfers. However, for the large file transfers, this setup struggled due to thermal throttling caused mainly by the Mac mini, as I discussed earlier. If you wanna use this as your external drive and run your Mac OS out of it, like I showed in my previous video, then this drive is an excellent choice as it runs even better than your internal SSD. But as a portable SSD, this is not very portable. 
It lacks drop protection, water resistance, and it's hard to fit in your pocket or in a small bag. Ultimately, the best SSD for your Mac depends on what you value the most, speed, durability, or price. By understanding your workflow and your storage needs, you can pick the right SSD that's for you. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and then I'll see you in my next video.